I'm Chris Stevenson, and this is Strange Assembly, and I'm talking today about Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden. This is the latest official adventure for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. It releases on September 15th, 2020, in the usual standard edition and fancy edition with the Hydro 74 cover in your friendly local gaming store. As you might expect from the title, Rime of the Frost Maiden is indeed set entirely within Icewind Dale. This is the northernmost reaches of the Sword Coast, the main place where almost all of the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition Forgotten Realms content has been set. Icewind Dale was popularized by R.A. Salvatore's Drizzt novels and the eponymous Icewind Dale computer RPG. Icewind Dale is always more than a bit chilly, but in Rime of the Frost Maiden, things have gotten downright frigid as Auril, the goddess of cold indifference and winter's cruelty, has retreated to Icewind Dale and plunged the region into eternal night. It is against this backdrop that the characters will adventure. And a good adventure it is. Rime of the Frost Maiden is solid overall, but it gets just better and better as you go through the adventure until the very end cap dungeon, I'm air quoting here, dungeon, is one of the best things that I have seen for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. What can you expect overall from the Rime of the Frost Maiden adventure? The first thing is, although it is labeled an adventure, this is a, a full-length book, in fact more than full-length to some extent, because this D&D 5th edition adventure has at least 50 more pages than some of the earlier D&D 5th edition adventures did. It takes characters from levels 1 to 11 if you want to play through the whole thing. Because it's set in Icewind Dale, you should throughout expect the need to gear up, dodge avalanches, survive blizzards, and just plain old stay warm. These are going to be omnipresent things throughout the adventure. You should probably also bring along lots and lots of torches if you're one of those silly humans who lacking in low light vision or dark vision. But overall, the adventure is divided into two sections. The first section, which takes you from levels 1 to 6, primarily consists of a series of individual smaller scale quests that you or the DM can choose from as you're going to level up. You start out in 10 towns. There is a selection of quests that originate in each of the various 10 towns. This adventure uses milestone leveling. So after you've completed a certain number of those, you'll level up a certain more, you'll level up. After you get to a high enough level, you'll sort of expand out from those 10 towns focused quests to quests that go more broadly out into the rest of Icewind Dale. The early adventures will introduce characters to the locality, become intertwined with some of the local factions, and start to be introduced to various members of the Arcane Brotherhood who have each come to Icewind Dale for their own purpose. This overall section of Rime of the Frost Maiden is capped off with an epic battle against a foe who might well lay waste to all of those ten towners the players have come to know. Now, you may have noticed that in this section there is a distinct lack of the Frost Maiden, and really at level 7 is where you kick over into that part of the adventure. So this is an adventure slash campaign that you have a clean breakpoint to enter in the middle if you are not interested in or just don't have the time to play through the whole 11 levels. You can play through this levels 1 through 6 content and actually get to know the 10 towners, or you can just jump in right at level 7 and go more directly into the, hey, let's deal with this magical situation with Aurel causing all sorts of problems in Icewind Dale, because in this section, you're going to move away from 10 towns and you're not really going to be interacting with those people anymore. You're going to go out and try to uncover the secrets of the rhyme of the Frost Maiden itself, which will 
allow you to uncover the caves of hunger and brave the horrors therein, and then go on to the secrets that lie beyond. Oh, and probably deal with the Frost Maiden herself at some point. These later ventures are where Rhyme of the Ice Maiden really shines, combining traditional adventuring and exploration with horror concepts from things like the movie The Thing or the Lovecraft story The Mountains of Madness, ratcheting up elements of paranoia and isolation that have been present in, in some ways from the start, but they really heavily come into play here. There's darkness and mystery and... Who can you trust? Can you trust the other NPCs? Can you really trust each other? What perils and powers await those who dig a little bit too deeply into ancient mysteries? Let's just say that Rhyme of the Frost Maiden has a bunch of references to the rules on indefinite madness for a reason. And now you notice I'm not saying anything about what the final section of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is. I've intended this as a spoiler-free version. If you go to strangeassembly.com, you can see the written review. That written review has a separate section that's just for someone who might be GMing this that I would suggest a player not read. But I can tell you that there's this pretty epic end exploration of what you find beyond the Caves of Hunger, and it's got some really fantastic elements blended together in a way that is one of the best 5th edition adventure sections that has been published so far. If you've got the time, I think that Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is fun and engaging and worth playing through. If you don't have the time, though, I would still highly recommend trying to get the chance to play through the final half of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, or if you've got even less time, the very final end game section of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Obviously, it always loses a little punch if you're only doing the final section, but it's really quite spectacular. Again, this is Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. It is releasing on September 15th, 2020, in a regular version available everywhere and the special cover version available at your hobby game shop. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to like or subscribe below, and of course you can find us at strangeassembly.com.